Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another playthrough and review. Today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game right here, Pirates Dragon's Treasure. Full disclaimer, this is a paid playthrough and review. Another disclaimer, this game is still in prototype form. It is not finalized production. In particular, the artwork has not been finalized. So please take that into consideration as you're assessing the components to this game. Now, Pirate's Dragon's Treasure here is a swashbuckling pirate-themed card game for two to six players, recommended ages of 12 and older, and the estimated game length is 30 minutes. And this is pretty much what the game consists of as far as components is concerned. It's all card-based. You have a bunch of different decks that you're going to be shuffling and preparing for the beginning of the game. First of all, you're going to have your main deck of cards, which is referred to as your plunder. And this is the heart of the game. You're going to shuffle this deck, and you're going to deal out five cards as a starting hand to each player around the table. For the purposes of this video, I will be simulating a two-player experience. Then we're going to have our Pirates, Dragons, Treasure, Battle deck which consists of a few cards that are going to be used to randomly determine the outcomes in battle uh, we'll shuffle this deck up place it face down here so nobody could see and we will draw from this when it calls for it in particular when we're engaging in battle with dragons because in this game the players are not actually battle, battling each other. Instead, they're kind of racing to build as strong of a ship and a crew as possible in order to be the first person to defeat the dragon. And the game comes with five possible dragons, five big bads or bosses that will be the ultimate end game winning condition. You shuffle this deck of five dragon cards and you randomly deal one and that will be the dragon that the players are dealing with for that particular game. In this case, we have Voidrin. If you look here, it tells you that Voidrin has a life of eight. Uh, it also tells you the special ability. This sea monster is well known amongst buccaneers and they receive a morale boost as a result. And I'll talk more about uh, the different crew types, and also in particular about this morale concept, which basically determines your strengths and weaknesses uh, when you're fighting against uh, the dragons. And then there's some flavor text here. The legendary sea monster Voidrin often appears from the depths below, ready to rip stern from bow. Okay, so we're just going to set that aside right here where all players could see. It might be a little bit off camera. But basically, players are working to build their crew and their upgrades on their ships in order to be able to confront this dragon. And each player has a virtual ship, if you will, uh, and that's basically their player area, where they can place one crew and up to three upgrades. That is the capacity for your ship or your player area. Whenever you want to add additional crew or additional upgrades, you're going to be forced to discard other cards because that's the only space you have. Space for one crew member and up to three upgrades. So now that we've talked about setup, let's show you how the game actually plays. We're going to simulate a few rounds to give you guys an, an idea as to how it goes. Uh, we're going to start with a player here on the left. And on a player's turn, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to draw two cards from the top of the plunder deck and add it to their current hand. Now the first phase in a player's turn is the bartering phase where the active player can engage in dialogue and negotiation with all the other players around the table in the efforts to strike deals and perhaps make trades with one another. Um, so in a two player game you probably will not see too much of that but things can get very interesting once you have three or a higher player count this game goes all the way up to six players. Things can get very interesting in the bartering phase once you have that many players around the table. So let's look at the different cards. And as I mentioned, some of the artwork is still in progress uh, for this uh, game here. But we're going to talk about the different card types. And we have... Uh, treasure cards and treasure cards are very very important because they're basically your money in the game and here you have your treasure standard stash effect this is a treasure card used to pay for ship upgrades and recruit crews so basically your ship um your crews and your upgrades are basically going to give you the ability to eventually confront voidrin or any dragon that's in play here and ultimately win the game. But in order to play your crew and to play your upgrades, you're going to have to pay their costs. And here on the upper left-hand corner, it tells you how much this treasure provides. It provides one 
gold coin for you. So I have two treasure uh, standard stash cards here. So that means I have two treasure to work with right from the start of the game. Then we have our crew cards. And our crew cards are distinguished by the fact that they have a morale type printed here on the upper left hand corner. And the different morale types include weak, strong, and mighty. And basically these morales are going to determine how successful you're going to be against a dragon. And they're particularly going to determine how some of these battle cards are resolved when we flip them over for combat. So in particular here, the bloody buccaneer has a morale of strong. So if this is your cruise, then that will be your morale. And also remember here that for this particular dragon, Voidrin, it says... He's well known amongst buccaneers and they receive a morale boost as a result. In other words, the buccaneers, if they're your crew, they're going to get a boost. So instead of being strong, they're going to go to the next level, which is mighty. As a matter of fact, it's printed here on this card. Morale versus sea monsters in particular, like Voidrin, is increased to mighty. Now the cost of this buccaneer here would be two treasure to recruit. Uh, so that's that. Then we have some ship upgrades, and we have here the Berry Jolly Roger. Uh, this basic upgrade adds three durability, that is hit points, to your ship. Here in the upper left-hand corner, you see how much hit points the different um, ship upgrades add to a player's ship. And that's very important because that's how much damage you can sustain when you engage in battle with the dragon. So there's that. Uh, we have here... Now, the cost for this, by the way, is on the upper right-hand corner, one coin. Here we have the oversized rudder. And it says this premium upgrade adds five durability, that is, hit points to your ship. However, it costs up to two. So there is that. Um, here we have another premium upgrade. Adds five durability, also costs two. Uh, yeah, so there's that. And that's the iron plating. Then we have other card types here in this game that we deal with. We have bounty cards and we have curse cards that you'll see later. The bounty card, Rum Stash, basically it triggers its effect when you play it. It says it allows the holder to play an extra upgrade or crew during their turn. And this is very important because typically speaking on your turn, you can either play one card or you can choose to engage in battle with the dragon. However, you can only engage in battle with a dragon if you have one crew and at least one upgrade. Otherwise, uh, fighting the dragon is not even an option. So in this case, early on in the game, nobody's going to be fighting the dragon. But as I mentioned, you typically can only play one card per turn. But a card like this, the Bounty Rum Stash, allows you to play two. Now in this case, I cannot afford more than one card anyways. So I'm going to choose to play down this uh, strong bloody buccaneers crew card in my ship area here and it's going to cost me two coins so i'm going to spend two of these treasure cards here i'm going to place them in a discarded pile that i'll create right here and basically this player here is done with their turn we'll proceed to this player here on the right and again at the beginning of your turn you draw two cards right here you can engage in any bartering and any trading. And this player here has three coins to work with. They have an iron plating um, ship upgrade. They have these edgy black sails, which is a ship upgrade um, of three hit points. And they have this treasure card here which is a big booty card. This is a double treasure card. So this gives you two money instead of your typical one from your standard stash. So this guy has a lot of money. He has four treasure right here, or five, I should say. And then he has this King's Quarter upgrade. This rare upgrade adds two durability and grants immunity to mutiny when attacking the beast okay so that's a particular keyword in this game mutiny and basically if you have this ship upgrade this player would be uh immune to that particular keyword so we have five money to spend we're going to start with the iron plating because it adds five hit points to this player's ship and he's gonna have to spend two treasure for that and he is done because, again, you could only play one card per turn unless you have a card that allows you to break that rule. Now we'll proceed back to this player here. They'll draw two cards. Again, you can engage in any type of bartering and exchange and deal making if you want to. 
So this player here has no more money. He still has, so he has all these cards and no money. So they're basically going to have to sit on their turn because there is nothing they can do. They could play this card that allows them to play an extra upgrade, but they can't even afford any of the upgrades they have right now. The good news is they have lots of options as far as uh, upgrades. However, they need to hope in the future to draw some money. And this perhaps would have been a great opportunity, especially if we were playing multiplayer, to try to offer some of these upgrades to players around the table in exchange for some money um you could have probably offered a really valuable oversized rudder to somebody else and perhaps they would have been interested in it and giving you some money so this player is done with their turn we'll proceed back to the player here on the right and they will draw two cards again it's the opportunity to engage in any discussion for deals or bartering uh and let's see what this player is going to do here they have three treasure to work with and here they have a crew member they have crew, which is uh, actually, no, this is a bounty, pirate core. Sing a sea shanty to raise an active cruise morale to mighty. So this is actually a card that can be played to increase another crew member's, uh, another crew, uh, their morale will go up to mighty. So this would be very useful if you have a crew that's either weak or strong. They would bump all the way up to mighty. Uh, however, uh <laughs> Uh, I do not have any crew right now. It says here in the bottom, the cost is sing your heart out. No, literally, sing a sea shanty out loud right now. Okay, so this game is filled with lots of uh, pirate-themed humor here. So let's see what we could do as far as these crew or these upgrades. We're going to play this uh, Cerberus Shark Bowsprit. And that's going to cost one treasure. And it's going to add three hit points to this player's ship. So as you can see, this player already has uh, hit points worth of eight uh, damage that they can sustain. And this is pretty much it as far as the basic game flow. Players are gonna draw two cards, again, trying to get that right combination of treasure cards and crew and ship upgrades in order to place them down in their player area, referred to as their ship. And they cannot engage in combat with the actual big boss until they have at least one crew card, which is their maximum, and at least one upgrade. Now, ideally speaking, you perhaps want to wait to be as strong as possible and have multiple ship upgrades. You can have all the way up to three in order to increase your chances to succeed against a dragon. However, the other players around the table serve as an obstacle and as a pressure, as a ticking time bomb, because it does end up becoming a bit of a race, a race to the finish. See who's the first person who's going to fight and confront that dragon. And a little bit of press your luck. Maybe it's worth risking um, your defeat because once you lose to the dragon, you basically are defeated. It is a, uh, a battle to the finish. But it might be worth it to beat your opponents to the punch. Now, let's just simulate a little bit of what battle looks like. Here, we'll just grab uh, and combine this player's uh, crew, the Bloody Buccaneers. And we'll have the Iron Plating and the Cerberus Shark Bowsprit uh, ship upgrades here. So these give you all the stats that you need to understand your, um, your uh, character or your ship. So we have the Bloody Buccaneers who have a morale of strong. However, against sea monsters, their morale becomes mighty. And we are dealing with a sea monster here in Voidrin. So they have a... Uh, morale of mighty. They also have eight hit points that they can sustain. So against Voidrin, who also has eight, they're basically even. It's going to be a fair matchup between this ship and Voidrin here. And basically the way battle is resolved is you flip over these cards here, the battle cards that have been randomly shuffled at the beginning of the game, and you resolve them until either the dragon has been defeated or the human player uh, has been defeated and eliminated. And the first one here says pirate charge. And basically it tells you what happens according to your crew's morale. And in this case we have mighty. And it says that the dragon loses two health. So now the dragon here has lost two health. They are down to six health. Now we are going to flip over the next card here. And again, we've got the same pirate charge card. And again, because we're mighty, the dragon loses another two health. So the dragon, Voidrin here, has lost two health or, or four health. So they're halfway done to being defeated. We'll flip over the next card. And we've got Pepper here. And 
Again, we look and check our morale, and it is mighty. Dragon loses one health. So that's five health that this opponent, uh, the Voidrant Dragon, has lost. So we're off to a very good start as the human players. Then we flip over the next card here, and we have Bite. And as you can tell by the color, uh, this here actually favors the uh, Dragon here. And we look at where we are as far as morale, and we are mighty, and it says that the ship loses two health so the ship has sustained its first bit of damage and that's two health that they've lost out of their possible eight hit points we flip over the next card here and we have the tail swipe we look again for our morale mighty the ship loses one health so that's three health that the uh ship has sustained we flip over the next card here snarl we look over here for mighty and it says the dragon restores one health. So we're simply just going to remove this here to show that the dragon has healed up one health. So now things are very competitive. The dragon has four hit points remaining and the human player has five hit points remaining. We flip over the top card, Cannon Blast. The dragon loses three health. So that's a total of seven health lost by the dragon. One more uh, hit and the Voidrin Dragon will be defeated, and this human player will have won the game. So we'll flip over the next card. Mutiny. Morale reduced to strong. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there was a bounty card that you can use to modify your crew and make them impervious and immune to, to mutiny, but that's not the case here. So we are going to be reminded here that the... Buccaneer is no longer mighty. They are now strong. So we are always going to resolve the strong result when it comes to these battle cards. Here we have Parlay. And remember, they are no longer mighty. We are now strong. So we're going to restore two health to the human player. Uh, or I, I should say one health. It would have been two health if they had been mighty. So we'll simply discard this here to show that they've been restored one health. We'll flip over the next card, and it says here, Mighty or Strong, Ship loses 4 health in either case. This is Dragon Breath. doesn't matter how powerful you are. So we have lost uh, 2 health, 6 health. We have 2 health left uh, for the human player here. Then we have Knockback, and it says... Strong, the ship loses one health. So the ship is down to one health and the dragon is down to one health. So it's very likely that this next card here will determine the winner of this game. And here we got the cannon blast. And here it says for strong, the dragon loses three health. And that will be more than enough to knock Voidrin down to zero. And then the human player has defeated Voidrin the dragon. And as a result, this human player would be the overall winner of the game. Now, if the human player were to have lost this battle, they would not have been permanently eliminated from the game, but instead they would be reset. They would have to start from scratch. You would discard all your crew and all your ship. Obviously, they were casualties to the battle, and you would have to start all over again, which your chances perhaps would be difficult to win knowing that all other players uh, around the table probably have a little bit of a head start on you. And basically, play will continue until one player is finally successful at defeating this dragon. Uh, that's pretty much it as far as Pirate's Dragon's Treasure. This is a definitely a push-your-luck racing-type game where players are trying to build their player area, their tableau, their ship, if you will, uh, as strong and as mighty as possible in order to increase their chances to defeat the dragon. Because the more hit points you have on your upgrades the more bad and negative battle cards you'll be able to endure and hopefully eventually get to those better uh, battle cards that favor you as the human player. Also, if you can find ways to get group, good crew members, strong and mighty crew members, and upgrade their morales, then that will also be to your player's advantage because it will give you the better uh, benefits to reap from these different battle cards. At the end of the day, there's still a huge luck element, not only from your plunder deck and some of the bounty and curse cards that can throw a monkey wrench into people's plans, but also this battle deck in and of itself is very swingy as far as luck. 
Uh, the only control you really have is the ability to build your crew and your upgrades and to decide when you are ready to engage in battle. Uh, the game comes with a decent amount of variability as far as the different possible uh, dragons that you can uh, confront in the game. And that's pretty much it. If you guys like pirate themed games, if you want a lighthearted beer and pretzel type of game that doesn't kill too much time but creates lots of laugh out loud and role playing type of opportunities with a little bit of combat and combat and a little bit of trading and bartering going on, then this is a game you absolutely have to look into. Check in the description down below for more information and details and a link for this game. Thank you so much for joining us here when Harry met board games. This is Harry saying take care everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. Healthy and have fun gaming. Bye bye.